It's often the case that we have a number of documents in which to compare them. For example, we could have collections of reviews of different hotels or coverage of the same event by different newspapers. We often want to quickly and automatically determine what the most important terms in each document are and if we have more than one document, figure out what distinguishes them. Note here that when I say document, it doesn't have to literally mean document. If I have many reviews of, say, the Holiday Inn, I could consider each review as a separate document. But if I wanted to compare the Holiday Inn to Travelodge to 50 other hotel chains, I could join all the reviews for each hotel chain together and make a number of big documents. The size and level of aggregation that goes into a document depends on the problem you're analysing. The simplest way to identify the importance of terms is by frequency. That is, we simply count the number of occurrences of each word in the document. One obvious drawback with this approach is that common words like the, and, and so on will always be at the top of the list for any sizable document. This problem can be mitigated a little bit by using stop word filters. However, any English text contains mostly common words, and even looking at the top 100 words might not give us a good indication of what the text is about. The plot here shows the frequency of words on Wikipedia versus the rank in a log log plot. The fact that this is approximately a straight line, up to about 10,000 anyway, is referred to as Ziff's Law. Ziff's Law holds for most large collections of English text. It means that in any corpus, most of the words that appear are common. So even if we remove stop words, which would cut off the extreme left, we'd still be in the same situation. Most of the words in each document would still be quite common words, and the frequency vectors for each document would be fairly similar. Despite this, making word frequency vectors is the first step in many algorithms, so let's see how to make them using Python. First, we import the count vectorizer object from sklearn. This is going to do most of the work for us. Then we define our corpus of four documents. We create a vectorizer object, then fit the data to it. This is basically all the work done. The fit transform function counts up all the word frequencies and returns a matrix. Let's have a look at what we've produced. The feature names are just the list of unique words in the text in alphabetical order. The matrix X gives us our vectors. The colour coding shows how the sentence maps to the document. Note that the words in the vector are in alphabetical order. All the syntax in the original document has been lost. The vector just knows about what words were in the sentence and how often they appeared. This is an example of what's called the bag of words model. Text is represented as a bag or multiset of words where we forget about grammar and syntax. We can make a bag of words for the corpus by breaking the text up and chucking the words into a bag. We lose a sense but we have multiple copies of words that appear often. Usually we record this in a dictionary or some similar container. One last thing. We can also use n-grams in the count vectorizer. An n-gram is just a continuous sequence of n words. For example, we can calculate the two grams of a sentence by taking every pair of words. So, this document, document is, is about, about cats. These are all the two grams. Three and higher grams are defined similarly. Using two grams instead of words gives this result. Generally, there are way more unique two grams than there are unique words. Back to our original question, how can we transform text to summarise thousands of documents? We tried word frequency but hit a barrier with Ziff's law. A better way is to calculate what's called term frequency inverse document frequency, or TFIDF. Note that TFIDF is sometimes written with a dash. This is not a minus sign. In fact, we're going to multiply term frequency and inverse document frequency. To compute TFIDF, we need to calculate the two quantities. To calculate term frequency, for every term T, the term frequency is the number of times T occurs in a document D divided by the number of terms in that document. This means TF is a function of the term and the document. Note that we're referring to terms instead of words, since for example the text may have been stemmed, or we might be using n-grams. The document frequency of a term is the number of documents the term appears in divided by the number of documents, so inverse document frequency is just the inverse of this. Actually, it's also typical to take the logarithm to smooth out the values. So, IDF is a function of the term, and is equal to log of 1 plus the ratio of the number of documents over the number of documents containing t. We add 1 as another smoothing factor. Depending on the code you use, the exact form of IDF might be different. For example, the scikit version definition is slightly different to this one. The smoothing should not affect any conclusions you make about the documents, but it can be annoying for getting different implementations to agree. We calculate TFIDF by multiplying term frequency and inverse document frequency. Thus, for each document d, we have a vector spanning all the terms in the corpus. Even if a particular term is not present in a document, we'll still have a TFIDF score for that term in that document, namely zero. This is because it's easier if every document is represented by a vector of the same dimension. Python makes it easy as ever to actually compute the TFIDF vectors. We just use the TFIDF vectorizer. This is the result. Just looking at one of the documents, we see that the most distinctive word, which doesn't appear in any of the others, has the largest TFIDF score. To get some more intuition for why TFIDF identifies distinctive terms, consider a situation where we have 100 documents, 99 of which are about cats, with the other one being about tax. Common words like the will have high frequencies in all documents, but will be in all the documents, so the inverse document frequency will be low. This will suppress the high term frequency and give a lower TFIDF score so the common terms will have relatively lower TFIDF scores than if we just use frequency. In the documents about cats, 
the term frequency for the word tax will be low and the TFIDF score for the word tax in these documents will be zero or at least very, very low. The real trick is here. The word tax occurs very often in the single document about income tax, so the term frequency is large in this document. The word tax is also only likely to occur in this one document, so the inverse document frequency will be very high. Multiplying two large numbers together gives a large score. Thus, sorting the words in each document by TFIDF gives us a sense of which words distinguish a document in a corpus, which can be very helpful for a variety of text analysis tasks. For example, if we have a dictionary indexed by document name and term, we simply sort the term dictionary for every document on the basis of the TFIDF score. The first 10 or so terms will often give us a good idea of what the important terms are. Here we add a couple of lines to our previous code to sort the documents by TFIDF. We get the features so we can map each position in a vector to a word, and then this is a little bit tricky. The object x that's returned by SciPy is a NumPy sparse matrix. If you've never come across this idea, it's basically an efficient way to store numerical data. We grab the row at index 2, which corresponds to our third document, then convert it into a different type of sparse matrix. This simply gives us an easier way to loop over the vector. This is the loop. We end up with a list of tuples where each pair in the list gives the word and the corresponding TFIDF score. Then we just print the list in order. Here's the output. This document has the unique word mice, which also has the top TFIDF score. Hopefully, you can see how this might scale up to more realistic examples. One especially common application of TFIDF is making word clouds. These are two famous word clouds looking at the views of people who voted for and against Britain leaving the EU. The size of the word is supposed to emphasise the importance of the term in the document collection. A good word cloud will use something like TFIDF to expose the key terms that make the documents unique, and well-made word clouds can often be very telling and useful summaries for large collections of text.